everybody. It's Tyler here at Pike's Peak, checking in with 66475C X Machina coming in. What a phenomenal season so far as you come to this four event wins, five skills, bunch of excellence awards, triple crowns, double crowns. This team is legit. 63rd in true skill coming into this, and now you're off of skills third in the world as well, too. So congratulations. Great performance so far. You got to take a look at what this robot is comprised of, what goes into it as well, too. Awesome C-tier hang I absolutely love on this robot, but you just got to look at the overall packaging that this machine brings. We'll be breaking down a lot of different aspects and what makes this robot truly a winner coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Shreyas, on the spot here, one of the things that caught my eye was uh, you mentioned this trapdoor mechanism that you have for your intake on it. So talk to me about uh, what it is, when did you implement it on your robot, and what results have you seen from it so far? So for our trapdoor, the main reason that we have it on our robot and what it does is because a lot of the new strategies for games are reliant on having one try ball and just match loading that one try ball or dropping it off the front and bowling it but and sending, it, sending multiple try balls through the alley. But by having this trap door mechanism, we can put it on the top, which allows us to put uh, uh, try balls into our intake faster and better. And allows us to put, if you X take, um, you can pu pu push multiple try balls out and they're more consistent than if you just drop them off the front of your robot, which then allows the bowling to be more consistent. And then the same thing, if you push one try ball into here, it's a lot easier pushing into here than it, for our robot to climb onto the match loading barrier and in taking it through the front. And we implemented this about a month ago, and we've seen a lot of good results in for bowling and for one by ones in our recent tournaments. In your in your typical cycles that you see in an optimal situation, how many are you putting through before you start bowling on it? So normally, especially at the beginning of the match, which is like a really big bowling point, we already have some in the thing, so we normally do two or four. But then after that, we normally try and do cycles of four if we have both our match loaders there, or if one of our match loaders is on the other side, we'll do two. Uh, Tribals of cycles of two tribals. Yeah, and you're so right. The way that the meta of this game has changed so much, I think having that is so critical. Uh, and I'm starting to see a couple more teams have it, but definitely not enough that need to start implementing something like this at least. So, so, so glad to see that your team has done it. Obviously, it's been working out great uh, so far as well too. Uh, let's pass over to Rochelle. Talk more about the uh, slapper mechanism that you're doing on that. Uh, you know, we just talked about how important bowling is, but slapper so obviously important in skills. You did so well here so far in skills and in the world. Talking about what you have for the mechanism and the results of that. So right here, we have a one to three double slip mechanism for the slapper. Um, so basically the thing is that it's not like any normal slapper. The thing is that we integrated it so that it's on top of our hang. So it's also like less weight for a hang to pull up on. And it, it gives, so the thing is that there were a few problems with this. The arc was a really hard thing to figure out in the beginning. So because it was such a hard thing to figure out, we had to figure, we had to test many different arcs of this piece of polycarb right here. And like how this slapper would have a hard stop and like where it would hard stop so that it would hit the tri ball kind of like perpendicular and like what piece right here should go on here to give the least sound losses. So basically energy is lost when there, there's more sound made because there's more sound there's more energy put into the sound energy so we try to use these rubber pieces so that we would minimize the amount of sound energy being created we also use this arc because we figured out that this was the optimal arc between making it over the bar and also um not going too high up and lastly, um, this slapper, it has a lot of backspin. We strike the tri ball a little lower, so it gives backspin so that it easily, um, it stops near the goal and it has really good grouping. So I gotta ask you, uh, with the groupings on there, being third in the world in skills as we film this on here, what, what's kind of the main trick to getting your grouping down so well uh, during skills? So it comes down to a few things. So first of all, there's tensioning right here. You just have to have the right amount of tension. It has to land in the correct spot. Secondly, it has to um, hit the tri ball in the right spot. So it should give a little bit of backspin so that when it lands, it's able to stop because if it's front spinning or has no spin, it's able to roll away. But when it has backspin, it kind of it brings that tri ball to a stop. And um, 
and then the arc is the last thing in my opinion. The arc also is really important because the arc that it goes off of is what matters. If it goes too high, then it's going to land and then it's going to bounce away. If it goes too flat, then it's not going to make it over the ball. G give me a shot. Let's see what it looks like here. All right. Um, Parthiv. So nice, quick, and efficient. I saw what you're talking about, that rotation on there as well, too. So cool stuff with that. We got to keep moving on here. Talk about your C tier uh, climb. You're one of the few teams I've seen do a horizontal bar C tier climb. I think that's really cool. It's probably telling me more about uh, how you how the overall process coming up with that is. And how did you get up the C tier uh, with having that? How did you get you know your robot just so like compact up on that horizontal bar? Okay, so for our hang, we use four long pistons. And this is helpful because the further away our pistons are from the pivot point, the more force our hang has. So this this lets our hang like pull itself. This lets our robot pull itself fully up when we're hanging. Uh, while previously with the medium pistons, we it was like closer to the pivot point, so they, it had less force. And this let our robot like get all the way up to C tier because with medium pistons we were we weren't consistently getting C tier versus. With the long pistons, we were able to consistently get C tier, and as well, we have these um, Delrin in, uh, hang sleds, which let our robot go up, like climb up the bar, climb up the bar, and get into and make sure to the bars inside this yeah. hole in the Delrin sleds. And additionally, we have these four pulleys here, which let our robot get a lot of free spin on the actual bar. And this is useful because before we added this, our robot would be inconsistent on where, where, where it's angled. Like sometimes it would be angled like, like this, sometimes it would be angled like this. But what, versus with the piston, with the pulleys, it would always balance out the robot, helping us get a consistent seat here. Another thing to help our hang is, as Rashil mention, mentioned, we have our slapper on top of our hang. And this decreases the weight that our hang has to pull up because the slapper is on top of the hand. That's really cool there. I love hearing about the thought process with the pulleys and the doll rim that you've been doing with that too. When was this actually added on? Was that something very recent for you? Yeah, so after Ignite and our previous comp, we noticed how like inconsistent our robot was at getting, um, at getting the C tier. So we added that to help it. Very cool. To start wrapping this robot, one of the things uh, that I don't think I've seen really too many robots before is you're actually taking off components on your bot for matches, uh, necessarily. Uh, so, and part of that is in regards to your barrier climb, which I think is really cool, and how you address center of gravity. So, Winston, talk to me about that thought process, how it goes in, uh, where that's being taken off, how that impacts that, and how you're approaching barrier climbs. Okay, so first of all, um, barrier climb is extremely important this season as we're constantly transitioning from offense to defense and vice versa. So first of all, one of the most important things to that is the fact that we need to be able to barrier climb from both sides of a robot. So how we do that is we have polycarbonate uh, sleds for, on both the back and the front of our robot, which allows us to climb both sides. And uh, as, as part of the mentioned earlier, we, we want to optimize the barrier climb by keeping the uh, center of gravity as low as possible and as close to the center of the robot as possible. And the best way, like one of the ways we do this is by removing the slapper off the robot during our matches. That way that the center of gravity is closer to the bottom of our robot and that uh, the barrier climb is more efficient. Um, also, like the way our intake is, is designed, it allows us to travel over the, the bar while holding a tribal so that we're able to use uh, match load one by one and bring them to the other side of the field over the, the bar instead of going through the channel. Well, this is a very robust robot, and I can't wait to keep seeing this compete on the field. Obviously, I think one of the favorites here uh, going into this event, so we can't wait to see how you do. Good luck at this event, and we can't wait to see uh, how your results are. Thanks a lot for taking time. you got an awesome machine. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
keep the conversation going, and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.